Uh, anyway, we talk Everton now, and a uh, very strong word that despite the sudden availability of Carlo Ancelotti, uh, it looks as if David Moyes could be heading back to Everton six years after he left. How do the fans feel about that? From the Grand Old Team TV, Adam Partington joins us. Good afternoon, Adam. Hi, Jan. How are you? Nice to speak to you. Yeah, not yeah, too yeah. bad. I, ju- I just wondered if you kind of shared what I was saying earlier on, th- this feeling that you've been treading water for six years when when you let a guy go and you, you, you'd sort of question the ownership, wouldn't you? You'd question the boardroom and say, well, what have we been doing? We're having to go back to the man that we decided wasn't right in 2013. Um, well, I don't, I don't think Everton decided that David wasn't David Moyes wasn't right in 2013. If memory serves me correctly, he mm. uh, he, he, did, he went Manchester elsewhere. United, that, that's yeah, true. One of the one of the biggest clubs in the world, and, and decided to take that. And at the time, I think as Evertonians, most of us kind of understood that. Um, yeah, it is. It, I mean, it, I suppose it does reflect badly on the club how we're in a position where he's being spoken about as a, a potential candidate, whether that be short-term or long-term, to be honest. Um, that doesn't look great. What I would say, though, and I mean, if, look, I never, I, doing what I do, you know, I never like to speak for other fans, but I've, I do feel that I get a, you know, a decent kind of overview of, of fans' opinion. And a grand old team, we've run a poll uh, before the Chelsea game, incidentally, whether or not you know, we would we would like David Moyes to return to the club, and I think it was something like eighty percent of fans said no. Um, so, if anyone from the club's listening, it might not be the best move in terms of galvanising the fan base. Now, the issue yeah. that we've got, I think, is that there's no unifying candidate really out there um, that's that's overtly attainable at the moment. I mean, people are talking about Ancelotti, and I don't know what the situation is with Arsenal. I, I should imagine that, you know, given the clout of Arsenal Football Club, if he's got the chance, he's, he's probably going to, you know, select them over us. Um, I'm happy, though, that Everton are asking the right questions of the right people, though, you know, approaching people like him if we are, because I think, you know, he probably is the type of candidate that we should we should aim for, even though I've, I've got reservations about him. But it's tough at the moment, you know, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a tricky situation. The win at the weekend was fantastic, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't reflect great on the club that you know we spent all that this money and and you know the position that we're in and we're having to go back to knock on David Moyes' door potentially if we are the style <clears> of play that Everton adopt is is key really yeah. because at the moment they, they, they're almost caught between two stools they're, under Silver they're playing it out for the back and they didn't defend pretty well they didn't really look much under Ferguson Duncan Ferguson they went long every single time but they really competed and that made a difference in the game especially up against the pretty poor Chelsea team on the day so you know it's going to be interesting whoever comes in there what they actually do with the team how they decide to play that's that's a you know that's a really good point and um you know, incidentally, I think that's it's why I'm not getting too caught up in the profile of a manager because obviously I think as Evertonians now we're looking at it and we're saying, you know what, if we could bring in someone like Ancelotti, the clout that he has as a manager, you know, his profile, of course that, that kind of sends out a message of where Everton want to be. I mean, you look at the clubs that he's managed recently, the big elite football clubs. Um, however, you know, the, the, the style of play that a manager wants to ad- adopt um, also needs to match the current personnel that we've got, but also that I think there's a there's an identity to the way that Everton play inherently, and I think we saw that on Saturday. You know, there's not Goodison's the type of stadium where if you speak to players, you know, let's say it's a terrible place to play, um, and uh, you know, a really tough place to play, and it's at its best when the team are combative, they're on the front foot, they press. You know, everything that that. that Big Dunk managed to get out of the lads on, on, on Saturday. So it's really important that I think, you know, although, yeah, the profile's great, of course I want a big name manager. That's, that's, that's brilliant. But ultimately, you know, he's got to also be able to plug into the current system. That's the point. And adopt a, a style of play that, that, that you know, that, that us as Evertonians would want to see. But I think above that, though, you know, he's got to be a winner. And I think if you're winning games, the style doesn't matter so much. It's when you're not getting the results, then people kind of focus in on the style, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, until the, after about a year, and then they say we want to play better football, and then they go <laughs> and they go down. But Everton, the interesting thing about and from Ancelotti's point of view is yeah. that Everton's board are much more likely to back him in terms of bringing in players than Arsenal, who are very reluctant to spend too much money. And you know, you saw the way they bought Pepe over a long distance period, yeah, and. and cheap buy like Louise whereas you know Everton you can't say that they haven't backed the manager they really have spent quite a lot of money so if I was Ancelotti you know maybe you'd, you'd consider it. obviously maybe he wants to live in London but I don't know but that's the profile of manager the thing about Ancelotti is we, we interviewed him in the studio didn't we when his book mm. came out he's a lovely fella and he was just basically yeah, saying I often get the sack for the same reason that I'm given the job you know you've had a manager that's a bit up and at them and in players faces and they say bring Ancelotti in he's very calming influence then when he gets the sack they say oh the trouble with Ancelotti is he's too calm 
Too late, back. He just needs to be in their yeah, faces yeah. a bit more. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if, if the profile of what you've got at Everton, if, whether Ancelotti would be uh, that sort of slightly avuncular character, I don't know if that's, that's what you need at the moment. It's very what, different to Big Dunk, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, it's, it's an interesting point, and, and, and I wasn't aware of, of that interview that you, you did with him, but I think, I think I, I'm... I'm going to be inclined to say that maybe we do need a manager that's more in the direction of 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 up and at him and and and, and uh, because Marco Silva was was a quite placid character. I mean, I'm not comparing for anyone starts people start tweeting me. I'm not comparing Marco Silva and Ancelotti, but in terms of the personality, I think by all accounts, you know, he seemed like a you know a quite um, placid guy and you know was 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 quiet and maybe wasn't that that big character. You know, you look across the park at the one that um, the one that that they've got um, the Reds and I mean I've, I've got in trouble recently for referring to him as an egomaniac but you know the guy the guy is a big character he's a big personality and and, and I and I do actually tend to think that Everton do um, need someone like that now um, to, to, to you know to, 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 to really push these these lads on that we've got um, and um, that would be one of my reservations about Ancelotti you know I was reading before I came on lads you know I was reading about you know the situation at Napoli and then at Munich before that and there's some of the criticisms that were levelled at him you know they're kind of just going through the motions and, and, and maybe not um, uh, motivating and inspiring players in the way that you know um, you, you want your manager to. But with that said, though, if Ancelotti was going to be Everton manager, then I think that in itself would be a, a massive kind of uh, it would galvanise us as a fan base. I mentioned at the start of this, you know, the, there isn't an obvious unifying candidate. In, you know, and I've, I've seen people saying online, you know, I'm not sure if Ancelotti is the right guy for the reasons that we've spoken about. But I think if anybody out of look, if it's a comparison between him and David Moyes. It's Ancelotti every single day of the week. So, yeah, uh, yeah you know, fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, I didn't phrase that quite rightly. Of course, he did go to Manchester United, but I've, I've got mates who are Evertonians and they felt it was the right time. And as you've said, I think people felt it wasn't a bad thing in some ways that you had a chance to start again and that Moyes did move on. Um, and as I say, the return of him now, the fact he said 80% of you on, on grand old team, that is that is a hefty it's majority, big. isn't it? It's big. It's big. Look, it's, I, look, mm. I just want to go on record and say I don't. It's nothing personal against David Moyes. No. For me, I, I look. I grew up in the nineties. It was a dark time Moyes, when Moyes came in, and he and he did he did take the club on. There's no doubt about it. Mm. But I think things have changed. Times have changed. We as a club have changed, and and also he's changed as well as a manager. I don't think he's the same guy he was when he left us and his stock since then has gone through, you know, it's fallen through the floor, lads. So I understand it. You know, I would never dictate to any other ever Etonian and say, just because he, he did a, a relatively good job for us, that means that we should just go, OK, yeah, we'll, we'll take him back now. Even if it is a short-term thing, I don't think it's the right appointment. And if there is anybody at the club listening to this now, you know, um, I don't know whether they listen to you guys, a compliment to you if they, if they do. But if they do, and you can hear me now, I don't think it's a good idea, guys. I wouldn't entertain it. If, if that's the case, Case, just run with run with Duncan for the meantime. I mean that because it's evident that he can get something out of the players and uh, and ride that that big Scottish wave for a little while. I suppose. <laughs> Good stuff, Adam. Thanks very much as always. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Cheers, bye. Adam Partington yeah, there from Grand Old Team TV. Yeah, on uh, yeah, well, I mean, look, there's a lot to be said for that. It might be diminishing returns, but certainly at the moment, it's probably what the fans need, what the club needs. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. I mean, you know, you've got to give him more than one game yeah, to see. You know, that was one thing the way they played on Saturday. Sunday will be a good test yeah. for them. Oh, and it's in, pretty in clear. Mashiri is one of these owners. He's not Mike Ashley. Mm. He does care. What he wants to be loved. That's quite mm. clear. Mm. And, and obviously, Bill Kemright loves the club as well. So, you know, they, they should have an ear to what the fans are saying, I think. So, yeah. Oh, we'll see. At any rate, approaching half past one. Uh, Hawksby and Jacobs here on Talk Sport. 